All right. Um, so on this next problem, it says, a company conducted a taste test of its new soft drink. One of the 1,250 participants, 800 liked the soft drink. Of the remaining participants, 40% disliked the soft drink, and the rest were undecided. How many participants in the taste test were undecided about the new soft drink? Um, Tyler, you need to look here or change your, move your desk around so you can do that. So let's just kind of work through the numbers and see what information we can pull from it. So there's a total of 1,000. 250 participants, correct? It says 800 out of them liked the soft drink. Um, of the remaining participants, so what is the remaining participants? And if 800 liked it, then to find the other part, we just need to do 1,250 minus 800, which is 450, right? So I mean, I'm just, I don't really know how I'm going to use the information, but I'm just taking what information I'm given and saying, all right, if 800 like it, that means 450 either don't like it or are undecided. Um, then it says, of the remaining participants, which is 450, 40% disliked it. So from here, we have 40% disliked it. So if 40% dislike it, then the amount that's going to be undecided would be what percent? 60%. Then the question states, how many participants in a taste test were undecided about the new drink? Remember, this is the ones that disliked it. This is the undecided. So going back to percents, we can always create our, our proportion. 60% out of 100% is equal to how many people out of 450? Right? We've gone over percents. When we have percents, look to create our proportion. And we're trying to figure out x, which is the number of people out of 450 that are undecided, where we know it's going to be 60% of them. So you could obviously, ladies and gentlemen, simplify this, apply cross multiplication, and so forth. The one thing I always look at, though, too, especially when you're using a calculator, is if you divide both of these by 100, you'd get 60 divided by 1. So really, or 0.60. So really, dividing this by 100, dividing this by 100, um, reducing them, dividing by 100, you get 0 0.60 over 1. So really, when cross-multiplying, you're multiplying 0 0.60 times 450. You can obviously cross-multiply with the large numbers and divide. That's perfectly fine as well. But I wanted to do this operation because I want to remind you guys how to um, multiply decimals, because we did dividing. So let's go ahead and practice how to multiply decimals. Remember, when you multiply decimals, you have to align the decimal points and include extra zeros for space holders. All right? Now, when we're doing uh, multiplication, remember we start with the rightmost uh, number and just multiply times each one. So 0 times 0 is 0. This is just going to be a row of zeros, right? 0 times all of these numbers would be 0. Next thing is I need to include my placeholder. Then I do 6 times 0, 6 times 0, 6 times 0. So that'll be three zeros. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Add the two rows. When you add the two rows, obviously this one is fairly simple. It's just a lot of zeros. Now, to determine where the decimal point is, I count how many placeholders I have, which is 4. So I start at the end. I go 1, 2, 3, 4. So my final answer is 270. Okay. Obviously, with a calculator, it'd be much quicker and easier. But I want you guys to understand, you yes, you can.